Welcome back and happy 2018, everybody. So, uh, fun fact, we actually recorded this already and then uh, Drac realized that the board was muted for the most part. So basically what he was doing was he was pulling a YouTube and deciding that the Shadow Blazer should not be heard. That's true. That, that's basically what was happening. So first of all, Happy New Year, everybody. Yeah. Happy New Year. This is our first recording session in the new year. We're not completely in the new setup just yet. We're we're still waiting on a couch, but then after that, we're good. So, yay. We get to go through the same stuff we just barely went through. But welcome back, everyone, to Cloud City. With a lack of Billy D. Williams. Hello, I'm Lando Calrissian. I'm the administrator here. Somebody, uh, yeah, it's, I'm the administrator of this facility. Yeah. Oh, and I, I probably should make a joke about these guys, these Tron wielding or Tron disc wielding uh, Ninja Turtles. <laughs> they look like frogs to me. So fun fact, me, me and uh, remember around the, the time that these games came out, Ninja Turtles was a thing. So like Turtles in Time had come out and all that. And uh, I remember a, a very strong joke being made of like, oh, this is the lost Ninja Turtle. This is the lost brother. Um, <laughs> he's a frog, but he's all right. He's a frog. Yeah. And then me and my brother would get into arguments because I would say he's actually the long lost Battletoad because <laughs> I was the only one in my family who knew what Battletoads was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I knew Battletoads. I put myself through it. I agreed with James. The Turbo Tunnel was crap. <laughs> I don't, I don't care that James got over the turbo tunnel way later in his life. It was still hard then. It's still hard now. And here comes this jump. Oh, too many Christmas. And, and what's really sad is like, I actually took a lot of this stuff out. But as you guys can kind of see, these doors are random. Uh, these doors can have a random bounty hunter show up out of nowhere and start taking up the platform. Grenades. Hey, we got grenades. I'm OK with it. <laughs> um. But as you guys can see, the problem here, the platforms aren't that big. And as soon as that door opens, you're screwed because now they'll start hogging up the platform. Ah, such a problem. Oh, well, we're taking out some long lost Ninja Turtles, so that's all right. <laughs> I'm trying to think of stuff that we actually talked about in the previous one. So um, talked about Warwick Davis. <laughs> we talked about Warwick Davis. So we were trying so. Uh, let's let, let's bring people up to speed. Yeah. So Warwick Davis was uh, the original Wicket, the Ewok. Um, he also was the I, I, I'm thoroughly convinced Willow was made or at least Warwick Davis was put in that to either a spoof or not spoof, but uh, do his own Lord of the Rings, George Lucas's own. And also maybe to pay back Warwick Davis for all of the roles that he'd had to take on in his films, because uh, I mean, Warwick has got Wicket. He's got time bandits he's one of the time bandits yeah in there that's lucas isn't it i don't know <laughs> i think it, i think it's lucas um try to think of other stuff under under lucas's banner that he did didn't he do indie too who did who is did it warwick in, like he's got a little cameo in in raiders i don't think so who did r2d2 kenny, uh, baker. kenny baker okay uh, again a little person but he was Depending on the costume, he was either walking or he was like in a little bike trash can thing. Yes, for all the kids that I've now officially ruined, uh, BB-8 is the only one that's actually like a, an actual robot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Kenny Baker was a dude in a trash can. Sorry. Had to be said. Uh, let me actually look up Warwick Davis here so that we can so we can get all this. Unfortunately, we left out our other cool new tool for the new setup, which is we actually have a research device. I say research, but it's basically going to be Alex's random search tool. Yeah, um, I'm the I'm the resident uh, researcher for Dragon Shadow. Yes. And also the you're, you're going to be putting down like notes for edits and all that fun stuff. I'm not promising anything, guys. I'm, I'm a very basic editor. But <laughs> I like if you're at, if you're wanting something that Barry Kramer can do, you probably better talk to Barry Kramer. Just saying it might it might be for your benefit. Barry has not been relevant for like years. <laughs> Sorry, Barry. Well, yeah, Barry's Barry's off doing game development. I think he's uh, he's part of the like the Game Grumps game making arm now. I don't know, but he hasn't edited in years. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying if you want stellar 
if you want stellar like berry edits, you're you're looking in the wrong direction. Well, speaking of uh, famous YouTube oh, celebrities, oh crap, Warwick's done a lot. Yeah, he's done a lot. Then. Okay, Those... he's done Doctor Who. Yep. He's Grip Hook. Jack the Giant Killer. He did that. He's done a lot of video game voiceover too. Okay, so I'm just gonna go into like his recent stuff and. Uh, We'll go into it into Warwick Davis's long career. <laughs> I didn't realize he Flip had Flipwick and Grip Hook. What? He did Flipwick as well. Yeah, and Flipwick. That's right. Was he Flipwick? Yep. Yeah. Which one? All of them. All of them. He, oh, so like even all the redesigns and all that? Yeah. Yeah. They just changed the makeup though. As a, as a all. One thing that actually bothered me about Flitwick is they they never like around movie four they settled on a design, <laughs> and it wasn't a design I wanted. I actually liked the one design where he was old and. You're like. Oh yeah, they ass. wanted an ex the third in the third movie they wanted to experiment with him as being like some other random character yeah that, that they're like no let's just merge him back into flitwick <laughs> yeah pretty much uh so let's see he's done willow he was willow uh he's been he's been grip hook in the harry potter movies as well as flitwick uh he was in the last jedi he played uh wadibin i don't know who that is but okay i'm sure we'll we'll find out maybe, maybe he was in the casino scene probably um, Rogue One, he was in that too. And he was also in The Last Jedi, or uh, not Last Jedi, uh, Force Awakens. And yes, he's he's actually said is like Grip Hook in Harry Potter as well. Yeah. Uh, Doctor Who, he freaking did Doctor Who, man. Jack the Giant Killer. He's done all of the Harry Potter video games, obviously. He was in the Merlin TV series. <laughs> he was actually on cast for the Tonight Show with Conan O'Brien. So he I played a leprechaun. Oh, okay. Yes. Oh. I don't think. I don't think. Uh, it's kind of sad. Back. I thought thought he was actually interviewed. Oh, he did Narnia too. He did uh, Prince Caspian. Oh, cool. He was Nickabrick in that. I was gonna say, I'm like, if he did Prince Caspian, that's a tall order there. <laughs> was that a short uh, joke? That's insensitive, man. <laughs> Obviously. No. I know. Alex likes to gang up on your sister and tell her how <laughs> insensitive she is. Uh-huh. Uh, he did, oh, he did the Leprechaun movies? Of course. <laughs> Obviously he did. Uh, let's see. Oh, he also was a goblin banker in Harry Potter 1. Yeah. So yes. Not just Flitwick. Uh, Tenth Kingdom... He was in episode one. Oh, who was he was it? a pod racer. Oh, cool. Uh, so he was one of the pod racer guys. But I thought uh, the prequels all just used CGI. Yeah. He was in Zorro. <laughs> like the first Zorro movie. Uh, Don Alfonso is who he played. Wow, that, that's actually really support. Oh my gosh, he actually did the TV Narnia series as well. And he was uh, Reedy Cheap, Reepy Cheap in that. Uh, he also played Wicket in pretty much every endeavor that there was. So Star Tours, Wicket shows up in that, he played it. Uh, Ewoks the Adventure, and oh, Ewoks the Battle for Endor, I think, or the Fight for Endor mm -hmm. is the other one. He was in Labyrinth. This is not surprising to me. He was a goblin. Well, I guess what we're trying to say here, everybody, is that we love Warwick Davis. <laughs> He's the bomb. And uh, you should love him, too, even though Willow didn't work out so well for him. And we're finally to the dun, dun, long, dun, 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 dun. long take it, long time it takes to get to this boss. And uh, we actually did argue about like what this actually is. Me and Andrea are on the fence of it being a car and Alex is saying no it's not I think it's just like a magnet or something it doesn't look like a vehicle to me but most things in Star Wars don't look like vehicles I mean do I do I need to point out the pod racers I'm not talking like in what we think of vehicles here in our real world I'm just talking about what is like a vehicle in the Star Wars universe you know something that has motion propel propulsion something that looks like a a craft, a spaceship. Well, we can't see the rockets, but it's obviously flying in, so. I just think it's like a hook or a magnet or something. 
Basically, you're th you're thinking this is the giant magnet from Brave Little Toaster. <laughs> you're worthless. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How many people actually know that reference? Anyone who's ever oh, seen oh, the Oh, Brave... by the way, hi, Lando. Hi, hi, everybody. I'm Lando. And then this was the point where Alex said, stage clear, stage clear. <laughs> yes, I hummed it to the tune. Han, something's wrong here. No one has seen or knows anything about C-3PO. He's been here. He's been gone too long. To have gotten lost. He probably got lost later. <laughs> Come on, Chewie. Let's go find him. He's been gone and too yet, long to have yet. gotten lost. And we got the look of, why are you offloading this on me, Han? <laughs> Chewie's like, oh, so that means you're going to send me out to go look for him? Exactly. So this, this we did actually bring up. I'll bring it up again. Um... Empire was different in the fact of like, actually that that was the spin. By yeah. The way. Oh, yeah, I was gonna show you guys, um, where Super Star Wars gave you a choice in a lot of levels where you could be Luke, you could be Han or Chewie. Uh, this one took the choice away and said, nope, this is a Han level, this is a Chewie level, this is all that, and people actually didn't like it. So Sculpture Software eventually did bring the choices back in Super Return of the Jedi and added to it. So not only can you pick from Luke, Han, and Chewie, but you also could choose Leia, and in some levels she'd have, like, a different wardrobe, so the first couple of levels you can play as the bounty hunter that she's supposed to be at the beginning. You can actually play a level where she dons the legendary metal bikini <laughs> and nice. has kind of a Castlevania whip kind of thing. Yeah. Because she takes her chain and uses it as a, as a whip. And that's why I really like it. We'll, we'll probably even play her as, as the metal bikini. Simona And then Belmont. Andrea will give us dirty looks as we play her. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Well, she's Simone like, Belmont. <laughs> metal bikini. <laughs> and then finally, I think she does get Endor garb. So, like, you, you'll get her in her Endor outfit. Yeah. Same thing with Han, too. You'll get him in the Endor tarp that he was wearing. And then the fifth choice is Wicket the Ewok. And this is what brought on the whole Warwick Davis thing. Yeah. It's like, you can play as uh, Wicket the Ewok. And he's pretty advantageous in Endor because he, since his weapon is a bow and arrow, he can actually create his own platforms. And therefore, you can do even more exploration and get a lot more secrets out of the Endor levels. Oh, that's nifty. So we'll probably be playing as Wicket a little bit, just, you know, in case we have another mix up and I lose all my weapons again. And then I remember another thing that we brought up was the Ugnots. So the the, Ugnots. You, you did not know what the Ugnots were. No. This is, a, this is another race that you just didn't know? Yeah. We, we, we actually need to do like a trivia thing and, and you just point out races you don't know the names to and I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll amaze you. Do, do you know at least what Darth Maul's race is called? No, I've heard it, but I can't say it off the top of my head. It's called the Zabrak. Okay. But also they are from the planet Dathomir, so they are also called the Sons of Dathomir. Right. In fact, the cool part is, is that... Um, so you know Asajj Ventress, right? Yes. From from prequel canon and all that. And she is canon. For people who want to argue, she is canon because Clone Wars is canon. Um, she is part of the Night Sisters, which is basically the daughters of Dathomir. Like they they they're the ones that have a lot of interaction with that race, and they're the ones that train those race to create Darth Maul. Right. And eventually, another character by the name of Savage Opress. So the the apprentice of Darth Maul. Yes, Darth Maul had an apprentice. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I just had water go down the wrong th wrong tube. This is my new apprentice, <coughs> Darth Maul. But anyway, yeah, the Ugnots are an interesting race in the fact that they are basically a slave race. <coughs> um, I love the expanded universe canon and the fact that you get weird explanations like this. So Coruscant, the way that we knew it, like from the prequels where you got to see all the grandier shots. Yeah. Ve leaves very little to nature on Coruscant. And the way that Expanded Universe canon has handled that is basically every time, you know, Coruscant's been invaded and it's been invaded a lot. It gets rebuilt with every generation and the Ugnaughts are the ones that actually maintain it. They maintain pretty much everything in the Star Wars universe. So the Dar the Death Stars, they're on the they're on the ship somewhere. Uh, the best put in cloud platforms, they're maintaining that too. Yeah. But they're the little dwarf guys that I'm pretty sure at some point, maybe he's not credited, Warwick Davis played one of them. He, he like played an Ugnaught for, for five minutes. Oh yeah, I'm sure. 
Well, no, probably not actually, because maybe he was the one that was messing around with C-3PO. No, and, and in no. his head, he was just like, "Take this, George. Take this." And then every time he ripped wires, like, "That's for toy bandits, and that's for." Except, actually, no, that was not in his in his filmography. So no, he did not do Time Bandits. No, okay, no, but no, he wouldn't have been in Empire because Return of the Jedi was his first role. Yeah, that was his first role working with George. So yay, he got to be Wicked the Ewok. Because he was still all a, of Because he was still a little kid then. He was a. He, uh, I'm trying to remember like how how early on in his life he worked with George. Well, Return of the Jedi was, was he, his was first. Was he a little boy or was he a teenager at that point? I'm. Actually, I think he was a little boy. Just okay. Because he mentions it was his grandma who like uh, took him to the audition for oh, Return okay, of the there Jedi. You go. <laughs> so that makes me think he was still probably a, a young kid at that time. All right, there you go. Uh, I mean, you can look up his date of birth and see, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure he would have been a kid. I could, but I'm going to trust you on this one. I, I think that's fair. I, I think that's accurate. So basically what we're saying is Warwick Davis has the same relationship with George Lucas as uh, Helena Bonham Carter and well, Johnny Depp have to Tim Burton. Like well, they, Carter, not if they so much. <laughs> if, if they get the call, they're answering. Carter, not so much anymore. They, cause they did, they, did they get divorced? Uh, they were never officially married, but they lived together for like years. But now it's a they're Hollywood marriage. But yeah, they broke up. So, aww, huh, which is sad. She, she, she had another director look her in the eye and go, "You could do so much more if you would just leave Tim Burton's side." And she's like, "You're right." <laughs> oh, it was that director that said, "Yes, I find, I finally will do this." That's so sad. And then we find out later that it was actually J.J. Abrams, and she's in episode nine! Oh, <laughs> hmm. You know what? I have no problem with that. Helena Bonham Carter is an awesome actress. Yeah. She is the reason I went and saw the new Alice uh, movies, is because I loved her Red Queen. She was the reason to go see all that. And if, this is going to sound like sacrilege to the two Harry Potter fans, but as soon as she got cast as... You didn't like uh, Bellatrix? Bellatrix. I, no, that saved it. That, that was like, yes, you made a good choice there. And from there on in, I love Bellatrix, and I wanted more more Bellatrix than Voldemort. So funny enough, uh, the actress who plays Narcissa Malfoy was first going to play Bellatrix, but she got pregnant. Yep. And then Carter got the role. And I think she got the Narcissa role just because they, they felt bad and she was ready to go. Probably. So... There you go. So we, we basically have gone from the junk facility in Bespin to the actual carbon freezing facility in Bespin. And we're coming up on probably the best freaking boss fight ever in this game. Yes, Han got to face the carbon freezing machine in this game. <laughs> He'll never take me alive. And he destroyed it. So technically in canon, he shouldn't he shouldn't be frozen in carbon. <laughs> he destroyed it. This is what happens when you have to take the Super Star Wars trilogy and put it into canon. <laughs> Which is ironic. Does it really work? Because Harrison Ford just really wanted to be killed off in Empire. Well, I mean, if you if you want to take that, if you want to take the uh, logic of the Super Star Wars trilogy, I mean, technically in our playthrough, Han took out the shield generator. So why was Obi-Wan there? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> good point. He was just there to die. Just there to. He didn't help out with the shield generator or anything like that. Um, another one. I'm trying to think of the, the silly ones that we got in Super Star Wars. We got the shield generator. That happened. I know this isn't Super Star Wars. This is the Famicom one, but I still <laughs> love the, the idea that Darth Vader really was a scorpion the whole time. <laughs> yes. He was a scorpion six times. <laughs> uh, only two uh, Only two Vader boss fights were actually Vader. Just, just think about that for a second. Only two boss fights. He was literally the boss fight for almost every level in that. And 80% of the time, it was Vader, but disguised as, but a, a scorpion disguised as Vader. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's so funny. That actually happened. Andrea is just kind of looking at us all going, really? <laughs> is this what the discussion's getting to? Apparently so. Vader becoming a scorpion? Yes. 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 And, Actually, and the, uh, I can't remember, I think it was Tension brought that over and actually did try to dub that for US, and it's it's horrible. But you can technically play that as well as uh, a JVC version of Star Wars on NES. Hmm. I don't recommend it. I didn't know Victor made uh, game, video games. 
What was that? I didn't know JVC made games. They published it. Okay. Um, I can't remember the the company. It wasn't Sculpture Software. They they worked on the Super Trilogy, but because the the NES one came out earlier than that, and I can't remember the company that worked on it. Knowing my knowing my luck, it's gonna be like Atari worked on it. <laughs> like Atari was trying to get back into the spotlight back in the eighties. It's like, look, we didn't create a video game crash. Nintendo just came in and did their thing. <laughs> Yeah, and Atari, you did that. Sorry. You did that. You had one job. I, I have to be that guy. I'm sorry. <laughs> but you are that guy, and we will forever remember you for the crash of 83 and what you did. Because you know what you did. You unleashed an E.T. upon everybody. And I'm going to let you guys sit and fester on E.T. Hmm.